number one adventurer, K-7, former United States secret agent who operated in 22 countries on land, on sea, and in the air, brings you another story of today. Here is K-7. Ladies and gentlemen, as I have said before, international spies and crooks are engaged in many forms of activity today. Among them is sabotage, wrecking of industry. This has taken place in many countries throughout the world. Sometimes a story of this nature appears in the pages of our papers. More often, this phase of spy work is hushed up. It is a story of sabotage in industry which I bring you now. John Holbrook will take it up at this point. Thank you, K-7. It could happen here, but the scene of this story is in a typical continental factory town, a town very much like those which dot America. His friend and fellow agent, B-9, who sent K-7 the story, was called to consult with the manager of a large factory. We begin as the two talk together in the manager's office. Special Agent B-9, I've called on you because I'm in serious trouble. I hope you can help me. I will if I can, Mr. Carlos. Tell me your story as briefly as possible. It is a simple one. This factory has been here for many years. Three years ago, the board of directors decided to begin the manufacture of airplane parts. As I, I learned those facts on the way here, you formerly made parts for motors. We still do. But it is no longer the major part of our business. Now go on. We employ nearly 1,000 people, men and women. You are the chief industry of the community. Yes, that is true. And it is one of the things that worries me. B-9, this plant on which thousands depend for their bread and butter, for their very lives, it is on the verge of failure. A failure? Yes. But I, I thought you had been very successful. We have been until now. I won't interrupt again. Go on. Last year, we received a huge contract for airplane parts. The result of the rearmament program. Yes. We spent millions to get into production. Tools, dyes, new buildings were necessary. We used up our profits. Beginning a new business is always expensive. Yes, but unless you can help our contracts to be canceled. We have shipped out three consignments. All three have been rejected. On what grounds? One out of every three airplane parts we have manufactured has been proved defective. This plant is being sabotaged. I begin to understand, monsieur. The parts you manufacture are used in planes for... For a power that has many enemies. It is better to put it that way. Yes, yes, you are quite right. B-9, will you take this case? Take it for the sake of the men and women who will go hungry unless this business is saved. Mr. Carlos, your country is not engaged in war. Neither is the one buying planes in which your parts are used. Both countries believe in peace. For that reason, as well as for the welfare of your workers, I will help you. <laughs> B-9 made a brief inspection of the factory. Then he went to a telegraph office and sent for Rita Drake, a girl who worked with him. He also sent a wire to K-7. Late that afternoon, Rita arrived. Now, Rita. Oh, there you are, B-9. Your wire arrived just in time for me to get this train. Let me take your bag. Thanks. I've got a car waiting. What's up? Have we a case? Yes, and a difficult one. I'll tell you about it in a minute. Here's the car. I've arranged for you to live at a boarding house. Now we'll go shopping and buy you some clothes. But B-9, I have all the dresses and gowns I need. You're not going to need dresses and gowns here, Rita. Tomorrow morning at 7 a.m., you become a factory girl with a job. B-9, are you fooling? Yeah, read this telegram. It just came in. Look for a man named Luray. Six feet tall, slender, scar on right cheek. Specializes in industrial sabotage. They work under an assumed name. And it's signed K-7. I wired K-7 this afternoon. Do you see that big factory ahead? Yes. That plant is being sabotaged. Tomorrow morning, you start work on the assembly line. Unless we are successful, this will become a ghost town. The women and children whom you see walking the streets will starve.
The next morning, Rita started work. You must be the new girl. Follow me. Yes, ma'am. You do not look very strong. Who hired you anyway? Why, the employment office. Hmm. I did not tell them I wanted any more girls. Now come this way. Hmm. Sit there. Here on this stool? I said there, did I not? What is the matter with you? You act as if you had never been in a factory before. Oh, but I have. I've worked. I am the... not interested in where you work. Speak when you are spoken to. I do the talking here. Do you see this box of rivets? Yes. As these parts go past you on the belt, put the rivets in the holes on your side. Well, go on, get started. Like this? Oh, you clumsy little fool. You will have to work faster than that. The riveting machines at the end will start in a minute, and if you leave one of these holes without a rivet... Well, I you... won't. I'll catch on in a minute. Well, you had better. And see that you do not open your mouth. If I see you talking to anyone, out you go. Remember that. Do not talk to anyone. Don't let her frighten you. She is always like that. Ah, oh, she's out of sight. But won't she discharge you if she catches you talking? Discharge me? <laughs> I should say not. She's not my boss anyway. She has only the girl. The real boss of this room is a fine fellow. Well, he was before she came and started making trouble for him. And look out, you let the hole go past without the rivet in. Here, I'll get it. Uh, it's all right. But you must be careful. I will. How long has she been here? About a year. Ever since we've been making airplane parts. She's suspicious. That's what's the matter with her. Every time she sees anyone talking, she thinks they're talking about her. But why? You'll find out why. If somebody here was to go up and tell the manager who she sees on the outside, it would be the finish for her. Who does she see? I am not saying. I need this job. But I won't tell anyone. It does not matter. And look out, she's coming this way again. I'll see you out in the yard during lunch hour. That night after work, Rita talked with B-9 in his rooms. She's horrible, B-9. I can't stand her near me. I hope you won't have to stay there long. Now, you say this boy told you that she meets someone outside the factory. Yes, but he wouldn't say who it was. He seemed frightened. He told me to go into the cafe late at night and find out for myself. That may be the tip I need. Now, let's look at this part you brought me. These go by on an endless belt, and you put the rivets in these holes, is that it? Yes, there are 14 holes. I see. I wish you could have taken one with the rivets in. Do you know what part of an airplane this is, Rita? No, do you? Yes. It's a very vital part of the wing mounting. If this should give way, the wings of a plane would crumble. Rita, I've got to have samples of the rivets. I should have told you that before you went to work. I can get some of them tomorrow. Yes, but I wish I had them now. Mr. Carlos, the manager, said that his contract might be canceled at any time. Rita, do you think you could get back into the factory tonight? Uh, you could tell the watchman that you lost something. I'll try. I'm sure I can. It's getting late. I go over there at once. Then come back here. I'm going to the cafe. At the cafe, B-9 spotted a man with a scar. He seemed to be waiting for someone. Without being seen, B-9 slipped into the booth next to him. A few minutes later, a woman entered. You're late. What's the idea? It is enough that I am here now. How much longer are we going to stay in this town? I am getting sick of it. In a few days, our work will be done. Perhaps tomorrow. Mm, it has been nearly a year. Tell me, how did things go today? Three out of every four parts we made will be sent back. Ah. I do my job all right. But I do not mind telling you I am getting nervous. <laughs> what is there to be nervous about? Oh, plenty. You are on the outside. For one thing, they sent me a new girl today. Why should that upset you? Because she is too smart. And because she is not a factory worker. Ah, how do you know that? By her hands. She has long nails well cared for. Like mine were when first I came here. Ah, then get, get rid of her. Do not worry, I will tomorrow. I had to let her stay one day to make it look right. Now, how about materials? We are running out. That is being taken care of. But there are not enough to last all day tomorrow. I tell you, it's being taken care of. Louis is up at the factory now. Materials will be mixed in the boxes by tomorrow morning. Mm, they had better be. That is your part of the job, but I do not want the responsibility of... What is that? 
The plant whistle. Something has happened. Oh, let us leave here at once. We do not want to be seen together. I am leaving now. No, you're not. Stay where you are. What? What's the idea? Who are you? Oh. I am Special Agent B-9, Loray, and I'm turning both of you over to the police. Get up and walk out of here. And see that you keep your hands over your heads. There's the door. Now get out. A few minutes later, B-9 arrived at the plant. It was in darkness, except for lights burning in the manager's office. He rushed there at once. Now, what's going on? What's the matter, Monsieur Carlos? B-9, this girl. I found her in the watchman's booth. She's been injured. Oh, Rita. Oh. oh, quick, get me some water. She's been hit on the head. All right, then. Here is some. Rita, I shouldn't have let you come here alone. Here. Here is water. Uh, hold her head up. That's it. Drink it, Rita. Poor girl. Is, is that you, B-9? You're all right now, Rita. Oh, my head. It aches. Yes, just take it easy. The, the man, he, he's out there. I locked him in, in the locker room. What man? He's locked up. He had rivets like these. The watchman let him in. I followed him. He, he took the rivets out of the boxes and put these in. I pushed him in the locker room and bolted the door. Then they've got him, B-9. That locker room has no window. We'll take care of him later. Are you feeling better, Rita? Yes, sir. a little. I locked the man in and ran out and blew the whistle. The watchman came. He hit me. I'll find him later. P9, these rivets are not the ones we use. They're just like them, but... But they're soft metal. They'd never hold. I suspected that, Mr. Carlos. Your business is safe. I took a chance and arrested two spies downtown. One was an international crook, a man named Loray. Rita has locked a third in a locker room. It is the end of sabotage here. Sabotage is a dangerous form of spy activities. It has wrecked great industries, brought suffering to workers, and weakened nations' defenses. It is a danger that must be constantly guarded against. Listen for my next story. This is K7 speaking.